Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. This is the first podcast of the new season. So each season I go and just kind of reach out to artists or ask artists to reach out to me and be on the show. There's no screening involved whatsoever. I just want to meet people. I want to learn about what they're doing. And this particular person that I talked to today is one that reached out to me. The artist is located in Seattle. He's a mixed media artist. He's a writer. His name is Mortimer K is who I'm talking to today. We talk about trying to get back into life again, trying to get out into public again, how online has benefited us. It's a, it's, it's a fun conversation and it's really a lot more, a lot more of a personal conversation than I think either of us was expecting. And, and even though it's online, we actually didn't get together to talk. We spoke like it was like we got the chance to go talk to each other in person. And it's like, oh, isn't this great to be out again? But yet at the same time, the fear of did I, am I going to accomplish what I want after going, when I'm able to get out again, I want to do this. I don't know. It's, I'm still internalizing the whole conversation, but it is a fun conversation. I love uh, when I get to meet people and have these sort of like-minded thoughts and also to feel like I'm not the only person out there that feels this way. So it was a great conversation. Uh, you can check out Mortimer K's stuff at skinnytoothproductions.com. Check out his artwork. Uh, so here is my conversation with Mortimer K starting right now. You, first of all, you are located in Seattle, I think it says from your account. Yeah, uh, yep, Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. So how long have you been in Seattle? Since 1998. 98, you, and you were there before the whole everybody moved to Seattle, or after everybody moved to Seattle uh, movement. Like, I know so many people in the mid-90s that went to Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just... Uh, <laughs> it ended up being that I moved out here because it was... I had a bad breakup, and we're all hanging out one night, and we're super loaded, and my friend turns to me and is like, hey, you want to go to Portland? And then As people do. <laughs> four hours later, we were on a bus. And <laughs> Come on. Really? That was it? That was it. Yeah, I looked like a backpack and the clothes I was wearing, and then we ended up in Portland. And apparently his friend, he didn't tell we were coming, so his friend was mad at him. And then I got stuck at the bus station, but then I remembered my aunt lived in Redmond, so I ended up here. <laughs> and then I stayed. <laughs> well, where did you? So where did you take a bus from when you when you actually went to Portland to begin with? I was in Kalamazoo. Okay. <laughs> and you had nobody that you had to check in with. It was just like you were just freewheeling, no, going I, with the wind. <laughs> yeah, I've been known to just pick up and leave. It was sort of like my thing. Okay. Hanging around with a bunch of reprobates at a place called Dirty's Outhouse Poets Cafe. <laughs> it's like a run-on sentence for the name of a place. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those places where you could go buy a cup of coffee and just like hang out all day. Okay. Talk to people, write poetry, short stories, play chess. There's my friend Mock. <laughs> I never beat him a single time. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, he was a really good chess player. Okay. Well, what? Uh... Were you were you in high school during this time, or was this college, or were you, did you even go to college? What? How old were you around this time? Two years. I was about twenty one when I was in Kalamazoo. Okay, so you were just kicking about there, and then were you actually were you making art at this time? You said you were kicking out in this cafe and talking about, and you were doing like, were you writing? Were you making artwork? What were you doing at this time during this period? It was all uh, pro poetry type stuff at this time, spoken word things. I, much like some of my other friends, was not working, just sort of couch surfing. I donate plasma a couple times a week for you know beer and cigarette money. Yeah. And, uh, somehow we always managed to have enough money to like pretty much party every night. <laughs> that was always the case. That was the priority. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that, that's what I did for about ten months when I lived there. <laughs> okay, and now when you went to Portland, which it's funny, I had a friend who did the very same thing, and he also was writing poetry, and he went to go to I can't remember if he actually went to Portland to go to school, but he went there, 
and I went to visit him. I actually made the trip in 24 hours from Madison, Wisconsin to Portland. Made it in 24 hours. Yeah. I don't know how. Well, actually, I kind of know how the person that I went there with, we were we were going to switch off driving and um he had a pickup truck and in the back there was a there was it was it had a topper. So what we were going to do is one of us was going to sleep in the back while the other one drove the the pickup and it was a tiny little thing. Then I realized after I drove for like 8 hours, uh I got in the back to lay down and he is an awful 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 driver. So I was terrified. So I was just like, I'll just drive the rest of the way. And I ended up just staying up and I was like, we got to make it there because I, I'm not going to pull over. We don't have money. We had just enough money to get there or something like that. And we made it in 24 hours. And the one thing I remember is we showed up on my friend's, uh, at my friend's apartment and he handed me a beer and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I, uh, uh, next thing I knew, I woke up with on my knees with my face on the carpet like the next day like apparently he handed me a beer and i was like oh that's great and then i was like i'm just gonna lay down for a second and i got as far as my knees and put my face on the carpet and fell asleep for like 10 hours oh uh, yeah i'm familiar with that <laughs> one of the finals weeks when i was in art school and i don't know i've been up for like three days or something yeah and i just walked into my dorm room I didn't even shut the door, and I woke up, like, the next day. <laughs> I just looked, and I had all my clothes on, my boots on. I was just face down in my bed. Yeah. All my books and my papers were, like, this perfect fan next to me, and I just, like, cascaded onto my bed. <laughs> what art school was this? Uh, it was North Central Michigan College, so. Oh, wow. In Traverse City. Okay. Now, what did you go to? Uh, what did you go to art school for? Or what? I guess the question would be, what was your major? Um, it was the major was graphic design, and the minors were uh, creative writing and psychology. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So explain to me this thought process. So when you go to, did did you just go? I want to do this, this, and this. Like you went down the check boxes when you applied, or? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was good for art <clears throat> and then I scored high enough to get into an honors composition class. Really? So that and then there were, since I'd already taken psychology in my senior year of high school, I went to there was an abnormal psychology class. Uh huh. That was interesting. <laughs> right. I would imagine. Is that something where you take it because you need the credits? Like you just have to they go and pick a third. You know, or at least that's my impression of what they, it always seems to be that way in college. Like you have to pick some sort of extra thing that maybe you want to do. Is that what the psychology thing was? Or did you actually have a pursuit that you wanted to do with it? It was just interesting. Like that and the creative writing were more of like one for an outlet, one for interest and just like the way that people's brains work. Yeah. But mostly it went, yeah. And mostly it was just for the art. But. Okay. I took way too many credits in my first couple semesters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you started with graphic design and I feel like it's evolved since then. So what kind of graphic design did you start out doing? Like what was the, were you looking to get into actual like commercial stuff? Um, <clears throat> it was, it was a way to like help me like organize the things that like I'd always had trouble getting the ideas from my head into like a physical medium. Like it looks this way in my head, but when I do this, it doesn't look the same at all. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a way to help get like some structure to figuring out what mediums would work better for what. And the more I did, the closer it got to getting me on the path where like the stuff that I do now, which is mostly digital because I don't really have a lot of space left, mm -hmm. <laughs> like physical space. Right. So using like new Photoshop and the company True Grit, uh, True Grit Fly Company, they do like digital brushes and things. They have like old packets of like kind of old school graphics. Yeah. Like background stamps, different brush techniques. And between that and all the filters and things you can do on Photoshop, and enjoying the I'm enjoying that <clears throat> technology is caught up to the point where like I can now get the stuff out of my head and it actually looks like it does in my brain <laughs> how long did that so how long did it take for that to finally start happening 
Uh, 15, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I do like, but I do like that you were going, I'm going to take this traditional method just because I know that they have the tools and I'm going to basically learn it for applying it to what I want to do. So were you, what would you say your style was at the time that you were actually taking these graphic design courses? Was it similar to what you do now or were you still kind of feeling it out? I kind of feeling it out. I was drawing through like, I was doing like watercolor, but and also just like basic ink design sketches and things like that, pretty basic things. Although I was also doing layering with, you know, you'd cut like take like four different images or whatever and cut something out of this one and lay it over that and cut a little another piece out of this and lay it over that until you get like a more uh, detailed or in depth yeah. picture. Yeah, my stuff was pretty basic's not the right word, but it had like a simpler, just a lot of like line drawing stuff. Yeah. I figured out the color compositions with the way that like watercolor would like bleed into each, itself and things like that. And the watercolor ones were a way to help me figure out this weird like recurring dream I kept having. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> What's that? It was this like, <clears throat> uh, it was this weird like faceless being that would like jump through different realities with like not portals but like these weird zippers would open through uh -huh. and yeah <laughs> wow a long time i thought about it but yeah <laughs> is that is this a piece that you have displayed somewhere or no that was in my uh my first portfolio which okay. got stolen it got stolen <laughs> Yep. And then my second portfolio got stolen, so I stopped keeping a portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> or you just need to pay more attention to your stuff. I mean, it's, it could be either way. Yeah, well, that, that happened, and then well, it was, let's do 19,000. See, a couple years after I moved here, and I'd been in an efficiency apartment for a while, and I finally got a one bedroom. Mm -hmm. I invited people over to my apartment to have a housewarming party, and that was all like, Mew. Right. And then. People leave, and I go to sleep, and I get up in the morning, and I'd had, I'd taken, like, three or four paintings and, like, stripped them off of the frames or whatnot and rolled them up, and I had them sitting next to where my shoes were by the door because I was going to take them and do reframing and whatnot, and they were all gone. Wow. <laughs> Somebody just left with my stuff. It's kind of like, I appreciate that people like my stuff, but, <laughs> <laughs> but nobody's stolen anything in, like, two decades, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you probably are eventually you only invite people to your house that you actually like know, whereas parties, it's like, oh, that's a friend of a friend of a friend. You know, the more people, the better. <laughs> now it's just like, I don't know that person. Why would I have them at my house? Uh, yeah. <laughs> house parties are not my thing anymore. <laughs> no, me neither. It's I don't even think anybody's been to my place since I moved here. I lived here like three years and I don't think I've had anyone over. Uh, it, I'll go see people. I'm not saying it makes it sound like I'm some sort of hermit that lives here. Although I have noticed that my background is, it, it got really dark outside. So my background is really dark right now. Um, so it kind of adds to that effect anyway. Um, but you were, so you were, uh, I, I still want to get to the whole, um, cause you were doing the cutouts you said, and you were working with watercolors and stuff. And then you moved into graphically doing it one because of the smaller space, but also, I really like the idea of layering stuff too. And I'm horrible at it. There are so many things I would like to do and I'd like to try to conceive it where I'm like, I know that an overlay or something like this would really work. But whenever I do it, it goes to like what you were saying before where it's like, it just doesn't look right. And I've messed with things. I don't know if it's just that I don't understand the layout concept of it or, I mean, I know how to do it. I, even in, it, it's much easier in a graphic design program. You just set the type of layer that you have, whether you do it as, uh, you do it by multiply or, you know, you set the different things so it'll bleed through. But compositionally, it always looks really weird to me. So how did you, how, what was like a turning point when you started doing it um, in graphic programs where, where you really got, you started to notice that it was really working for you? Well, when I got into different kinds of layers and things like that, and then figuring out taking the uh, like the select tool and being able to like take like actual sections mm -hmm. and do different parts in different ways, and 
it was being able to be more detail oriented and being able to do it in parts as opposed to like okay I just did this one this one command and now everything looks different as opposed to like okay now just this arm looks like this or okay. now I body this way and then I can take this copy and put it over here like when I figured out I could take actual parts of what I was doing and ship them like I guess it was just knowing that I had more control <clears throat> over it and was able to get it just edit it and bring it more to uh, the thing that I saw in my head. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I just gave like some sort of circular answer. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I get it though. It's, I mean, it's not like you should have the exact answer that I need. I mean, I just completely, I'm just asking things that I think of here. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you have the answer right away. Um, no, it, and I get what you mean. And that's the part that's difficult for me. Like even trying to figure out, the different sections where it's like, you know, I could just do it to this arm. That's where I start to get, I feel like it's one of those things where I have so many ways that I could go about it at the ready that mm -hmm. I end up overdoing it. And that by the end, it's just like, it looks like, so did you use every filter on this drawing or <laughs> for me, that's, you know, it's like, I'll overdo it. And, and then I don't know how to backtrack it. And I guess I don't know how to mix it. Well, like compos that's what I mean by comp compositionally. All, all of a sudden I can't say that word compositionally. Um, it, uh, like how, when did you start realizing like, okay, you, you know, dial it in. Well, it was a lot of trial and error and figuring it. Like there's a lot to learn in Photoshop and yeah. every year more to learn in Photoshop. And then once the things I knew how to do, like, because every new edition improves the way that it worked before. So some of the filters I started using started to, I don't know, realistic's not the more, most the best word. Yeah, trying to put this into words. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say also that I also have a terrible fear of uh, speaking to other people in uh, public settings. And this isn't a public setting, but also talking about myself, I usually... I have a hard time doing. <laughs> oh, really? I tell you the truth. I haven't gotten that at all from you. You usually when I start talking, it's when it's okay. Okay. We I used to do this thing with a small group of people called the Barroom Writers Offensive, where we would do quarterly readings at a place called Barca on Capitol Hill, which unfortunately closed during the pandemic. But that was always like, okay, I know the, sh the, the know the show is coming up. <laughs> it's right. Like a week today. Okay, now it's two days away. I'm at Barca. I'm sitting at the bar. I'm still editing my story. <laughs> yeah. The show starts. I get up. I sit down. I start talking, and then I start feel, and then I feel fine. Yeah. Everything leads up to that. I don't know why they call it butterflies. It doesn't feel pretty. <laughs> no, no. If if anything, it's it it should have something to do with the skin because like I like my skin. So me, it's for performing on stage. I I sing in a band. And I have that exact same thing. Like up until we go on stage, I can't stand still. Uh, I'm pacing. I'm going outside. I'm like, do I have to go to the bathroom? You know, and it's just people are trying to stop me and ask me questions. And I'm like, okay, I'll answer your question real quick, but I'm going to kind of shift from foot to foot. <laughs> it's, I know what you mean. But once you get up there, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm doing my thing. So yeah. yeah. One of the other, one of the guys that started it, Eric Greenwald, he, but he's been in a bunch of different bands, been all over the world, performed thousands of times. And I'm just like, so, I mean, does it ever go away? Like, he's like, nope. No. Not even little. <laughs> oh, I get that way even about doing the show. Like, uh, every season when I finish it, I'm always really sad. I'm like, oh, it's over. Uh, and I, you know, I take a break so then I can at least have some time to work on some projects that I'm doing. And then I start doing the podcast again and recording it um, to release later, like we're doing right now. And as I start doing it, I'm going, oh, damn it. What am I going to talk about? Is, is anybody going to even sign up? And, and like, even up to me talking to you now, it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> you know? and, and yet my entire thing is putting out a show where I talk to people I don't know. So it's, and, and I still get that, you know, it's, so it, my whole thing is I just want to make sure that the person I talk to is comfortable as well, because I'm just happy that anybody wants to talk to me whatsoever. So I think that's really cool. Um, so thank you for doing this. First of all is, is, <laughs> and thank you for 
Yeah. <laughs> and uh, another th- so another thing talking about the composition too is um, I wanted to get into you do photography as well. And mm-hmm. I know that a lot of some of the, uh, I guess it would is would you say it's mixed media or collage uh, when you when you mix those together? Because I want to say it's a little bit of both. Uh, it, it's a little bit of both. It's, uh, you could also call it like assemblage. Oh, whatever. I've I've actually never heard of that. I like that word. You take bits and pieces and make it look like it all goes together. Yeah. Um. I guess you could call it both because sometimes I'll take like one of my photographs. And I'll maybe just change the contrast a little bit. And then I'll take one and I will take parts of it and just like colorize it. Mm-hmm. I just like the way it looks. Or sometimes I will take one and I will completely take it apart and then put it back together with a different background. And I did this one where I took the subject and did the, the photograph <clears throat> in like a gravel pit. Was just like her kneeling away and like her arms like this. But then I took her out of that, gave her two more arms, so more like a Shiva thing. Oh. I took another picture that I'd taken of like a, an open, like maybe where, I don't know, it was like an electrical something, maybe where you put like a, a meter or something. Mm-hmm. There wasn't anything in the socket, and it was just like the connectors and like the round hole or whatever. And I took that, it's like a background put it through a few filters, which made it look more like a weird alien temple sort of thing. Okay. Put her into that and then found a couple of old, like, stock images of, like, skeletons and put, like, put those in on both sides to make it look even more like a weird, like, alien temple and then shaded around the outside. And by the time I was done, it looked it looks like a digital painting as opposed to, like, a bunch of photographs put together. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> but then I took that particular idea and put it into like a different. I realized I have a few things. I get it to shine. It's called Venus with a pocket full of shells. <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed that a lot of your titles are either takes on or just actual like song titles. I, I like to yeah I like to give things titles that are either like have a meaning or <laughs> when I was earlier when it, like the early days of my writing poetry I would title things like the weirdest shit I'm just like I'm just titling all this stuff like French films like it may it might be about this it might not be about this <laughs> right yeah you've got one that's a it's like cardboard cutouts of houses I believe it is and you called it what's he building in there or something like that like the Tom Waits song. And it's a good song. It is a good song. <laughs> He's a good artist. <laughs> That's those are part of I'm trying to get trying to put together like a children's book with my kids. Okay. Like using them as like the sort of like an ima- a book of like imagination. It's like you get stuck inside or whatnot. And it was kind of like a rainy day sort of idea, but then like the plague happened and it was more of like we really can't go anywhere. Right. This which I built out of cardboard. Yeah. Oh wow. What's it, that's out of cardboard? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And then I made it look like it's flying through space, <clears throat> which I don't have a picture of right at the moment. But <laughs> wow. How long did something like that take? Uh, let's see. I figured between the cutting time, putting I use a hot glue gun so that helped things along. <clears throat> Probably took about four hours to build it. And then maybe another hour to like paint it and do a little detail stuff on it. Yeah. See, now that's one of those things for me where I could see going, oh, I'm going to build something like that. It's in my head. And then I would start doing it and I would have no clue. You know, I, I would have no idea how to make something like that, even though I really could picture it in my head. You know, I like, the idea was like, okay, I'm going to make a rocket ship. Yeah. This is basic shape. And then as I was building it, it sort of like, took on the like the look that it was going to have like you're sort of like weirdly almost kind of looks bird like sort uh-huh. of <laughs> and the kids like it so that's always good <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah it kind of reminds me of the uh the whole uh what was that the rocket to the moon like one of the first motion oh, picture yeah, yeah. productions it reminds me a lot of that which is very cool 
I like that movie. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it was actually on TV the other day, and I watched it, and I'm like, damn, like this. It kind of looks like the movie itself now. When you watch it, it looks like what a production today would go if we were to pretend that we're making an old silent film and had like it basically looks like Wes Craven or not Wes Craven. Um, Wes Anderson made it and said, this is how I would make a silent film. Like, it's it's amazing. So it was good. The production quality was really kind of ahead of its time. With that. Yeah. Like that one in like Metropolis. Where like you oh, yes. Bit, you're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did they do that then? I know. I don't know. Oh, man. What I was going to ask before, too, is uh, so you were doing the photos, um, and then we were talking about the the composition and all that. But I love the fact, too, that it seems like sometimes you'll create a remix because you'll take a photo that you had and then use that in a different setting or like with a different background or layer it onto t something else. So you'll be able to take one photo and actually repurpose it for multiple different sort of like, but what if we did it like this? It's kind of like writing a song where you start out with the song and it's like, yeah, but what if we played it, you know, uh, reggae instead of rock you know or it, not that that's what you did but but that's the concept is like you're going what if i tried it this way and i see that in a lot of your work and i think that's really cool that you're able to um not repurpose but remix a lot of the things that you do so when did you start coming or when did you realize that sort of thing that you could do with the the work that you make well it actually started that mostly came out of necessity of like not being able to have access to uh, shooting people as often. So mm -hmm. like, okay, what do I have? And then taking this and that and working through it and then realizing that I had also been doing that for a while and the idea of, okay, so I've got this picture and then I make it into this and then I make it into that. Mm -hmm. And then Say I took the picture like eight years ago, and then I finally make the piece that, oh, this is what it was supposed to be. It just took eight years to get from here to here. Yeah. Now <laughs> nice. And would you say, I mean, it's kind of like the, uh, it's like you're using your own work to do the, uh, uh, like the William Burroughs method for naked lunch where you're like taking the different things and like clipping them up and just piecing them together and go, what if I put it next to this one, you know, and just, yeah. yeah. I would have enjoyed that idea too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I even applied it to some of my own writing sometimes and be like, this doesn't make any, but if I take this line and put it down here and move this paragraph over here, okay, that's, that sounds weirder, but better. <laughs> yeah. And I like too with the writing. You you had uh, when we were talking before this uh, interview, when we were messaging back and forth, you sent me that uh, that you had been writing too. And my first thought was like, oh, he's he's like writes on Medium or something like that. You know, he writes articles. And you sent it to me, and it's actually you write with a typewriter onto a page, take a photo of it, and then post that on an Instagram account. And that's and it's poetry. And I like that method. And it's not. I mean, I just think it's cool. I always. Since I go to a lot of resale shops, I always see typewriters and I always want to buy them, but I can't, I would have 10 million typewriters sitting around and I, I rarely use them when I do have them. <laughs> yeah, I've got, uh, I got rid of some. I only have, I have six right now. <laughs> you make it sound like I've knocked it down to six. <laughs> Three of them for electric. Uh, one of them types in cursive. What? which sounds weird, but like the key, the letters go like off the side of the key. So when it hits, they connect. Wow. Okay. It's pretty much only good for like typing letters. Right. <laughs> but it's neat to have. It is neat. I don't think I've ever seen that. The uniqueness is one of the reasons. Plus I also have the rule that if I'm going to buy a typewriter, it has to work. Like, Oh yeah. Not buy it and put it somewhere because again i don't have the space for it so. right <laughs> yeah as functional and so with the writing and uh doing uh, so you've been posting on instagram and stuff like that for for both of these accounts um how how are you what are you doing with it when you when you put it out there how are you promoting it or are you selling your work like what kinds of things have you been doing um really bad at promoting myself but yeah i like I post occasionally, like so. I 
I make this, I do that. I also sell work. <laughs> I do print and commissions. Uh, get a hold of me. Right. Um, I need. Um, yeah, I'm trying to be better about it and a little more of the whole like people. I'm, I ask people like, well, what do you do this that? And people just basically come back. It's called shameless promotion. You just have to keep putting it out there. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I'm trying to do slowly but surely. I'm trying to. I have two books that I want to finish editing this summer. One was previously published. It was my book of prose called Screaming of the Mouth, which the publisher I went through I didn't really help me out a lot, so I pulled it, and I haven't put it back out yet. The other one's a book of short stories, which are all from stories I read at the bar and Writers Offensive. And I even have a web page, which mm -hmm. I need to get out more. I've got two music projects, one with my friend who lives in Rochester now, so we record. Like he he sings through my phone, and then I record everything into my laptop and whatnot, which was the Slayers of Sylvia, which I think I sent you that link too. Yes, I believe you did. Because I always because I need three Instagram accounts. <laughs> That's the tough thing, though. That's what I'm saying is like when you promote, it's technically all you, and. If you're doing like if you're working on all of them, that's that's the thing that I struggle with. It's like I send somebody somewhere else and then they have to go find that and then they have to remember that it's like I but should they be separate? Does anybody care about the other things I'm doing if they're following me for one thing? It's a tough decision. Like but I'm where you are. I'm like, should I be should I have several Instagram accounts or several web pages, or do I just put it all there and go, I don't know, look for what you want? That's but then it's like you're expecting the person to do all the work. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. <laughs> no, fine. I get what you're saying because it's, yeah, so do I do this, do I do that? I'm trying to get, I've, I've been re rebranding stuff to like, I'm like, okay, I called this, this, that, that. I'm trying to get it like all together under Mortimer K and Skinny Tooth Productions. So mm -hmm. easier to find me. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I even have, there's a YouTube channel I have that was when I used to play around with, like, doing videos oh. for bands and stuff. I didn't see that. I've uh, got, uh, <laughs> I forgot what it's under. It's either under Mortimer K, probably under Mortimer K. Okay. But, and I put up some of the, uh, because we would occasionally we would record the bar and writers offensive, but like it was all audio, so I'd have to fill like the hour and a half of audio with like a couple still images and mm. a little film you filter over it to make it look like it's doing something, but it's just, right. just look good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of spread out, so I'm trying to bring it together a little more cohesively in a way to like. Everything should like dovetail towards like my website and maybe my main Instagram. Right. Yeah. So. And that's, yeah. And that's where I'm at too. And it's like when I create those separate accounts, what it seems like is it's like, Oh, do I, I haven't posted over on this one. I've been posting on this one. And then it's like, well, will this work over there or does it work over here on this account that I have? And then I don't know which one to focus on. And then I feel like one isn't getting enough love. And then it's like, have I been doing work on that at all? Am I working in that style of the account that I created in the first place? Should I just stop doing the whole thing just makes me uh, have an internal monologue with myself. <laughs> yeah, they're all different. That's the thing. Like the one is all my graphic stuff, visual art. One is my writing, which is in a different vein. And then mm -hmm. there's Vic, which the two projects, my, my own solo project is more like electronic stuff. The stuff I'm doing with my friend Ricky, and we started playing music like '99. Oh, okay. We met at Coffee Messiah, which doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was like, "Hey, you want to be in a band with me?" And he's like, "You want to play? Yeah, you want to play? Uh, you know, want to play guitar in a band with me?" I'm like, "I don't know how to play guitar." Cool. Okay. Oh, it was one of those. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Been there. And it's sort of. Went from there, and it was, you know, we went through a few different name changes, but I eventually settled on Slaves of Sylvia. 
it's basically just been our project on and off for like the last 20 years, but then the pandemic hit, and he lives out in you know, New York, and then it sort of, the project became more of like an acoustic, folk, punk, bluesy, occasionally electronic project sort of chronicling like the life and times of a gay punk rock junkie. Okay. His whole thing. So some of it's pretty, some of it's graphic. <laughs> All right. But I think we recorded like over 200 songs in the last year. <laughs> nice. What are you, and, guided by voices? What's happening here? <laughs> well, we, our formula is is just that, like, sometimes I write down lyrics, sometimes he doesn't, and I'll pick a drum beat or not, or I'll just start playing something, and I play, he sings, when the song's over, it's over, go to the next one, and then like, I go back and layer over, and I'll put in, like, another guitar or a backing vocal or something, flesh it out a little bit more. Know, pan out the vocals so it's got like with some chorus so it's got a little more depth to it mm -hmm. and uh improv is probably the best way to put it <laughs> well and i was with the explanation that you with the explanation that you just gave too it's it makes me think like you don't spend i mean you it seems like you're doing first thought best thought uh and then moving on to the next thing like you're layering things on but 200 songs you you're you're moving on to the next song probably pretty quickly a lot of the time correct yeah and like most songs are a minute and a half two minutes even okay. though for some reason they sound longer <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally we'll hit like a five minute one or a six minute one but yeah and i think i also have to reorganize <laughs> Right now, it's all on SoundCloud, and I have to reorganize. I need to go back through. There's like 29 album EPs or whatever. I need to like clear out like maybe the first 20. Okay. Dense that down into like a best of anthology because I need to free up space. <laughs> I actually reached the limit where I can't. Other people have been able to see it, but I can't see it on my page. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> Well, and then there's, and then that comes down to like, do you just keep creating new alternate SoundCloud accounts, you know, which, which is actually pretty easy to do. Do you know the, uh, the Gmail plus trick, right? No. So what you can do is let me, let me give you, <laughs> let me give you a little uh, trick here for anybody. And this works for anything. This literally works for if you want it, but you, you have one Gmail account you don't want to go open another Gmail account and then you have to keep checking the two of them. Well, mm -hmm. Gmail the first part of it, like say, like mine would be like, let's say it's Tom at Gmail. So they only pay attention to the first part where it says Tom. Then you can put a plus after Tom, and then I can write like SoundCloud one account at gmail.com. So it would be Tom plus SoundCloud one Gmail account or at gmail.com. And then you go to, G you go to, and it ignores everything after the plus until it gets to the at. And so I could create a Tom plus soundcloud2 at gmail.com and all of these will go to my one gmail account but they'll be labeled as when you look at the address that's in the email they'll be labeled as those different things so you'll also know when people send you messages that you can that it's coming from this particular thing and they're talking about a song here you can do that to as many things as you want and just when you go to soundcloud soundcloud sees it as a different email because you're going Tom plus SoundCloud or one at gmail.com Tom plus SoundCloud two at G and you can do that. And all of the messages go to your one Gmail account and you can do this with Twitter accounts with uh, Instagram. Like you can do this so you don't have to create a different e whenever you need a n different email or you have a free thing and it goes, you've used your limit and it's like, okay, create another account and put a plus after your email name. And it so goes your Gmail. Before I created my other, my other uh, Instagram accounts. <laughs> yeah. And it, it only works with Gmail. Uh, so you, it's it's with Gmail. But yeah, you put a plus after your name and then you can name it whatever you want so you know where it's coming from. And when you sign it in there, the sign up thing goes, oh, this isn't the same email. Uh, nobody has this email. So yeah, go ahead. Create an account. Little trick for you. I do it all over the place. I have several. So, and the reason I bring it up is because I have three SoundCloud accounts because <laughs> I've run out of room too. And then I just finally stopped making them. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, I'm going to move on to Bandcamp eventually, but I, I am going to have to check that out. But it's also giving me an excuse to, because I'm trying to condense it down to like maybe 30 songs for like an actual album. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's always a good thing to do too. Like pick of the litter type stuff. Yeah. I want to do that. And since I live in Seattle, I want to send it to KEXP. I saw that you had that mug. I've been looking at that KEXP mug the whole time. And I was, I was like, huh, nice mug. <laughs> yeah. This is the, uh, I think circa 99. Oh, it, oh yeah. Okay. I see it. For a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, that's nice. I've been, uh, it, I, it's one of the things I like to listen to when I'm uh, trying to go through the streaming radio channels. There's that there's radio K in Minneapolis um wfmu over oh wow i'm going all across like midwest west coast east coast nice all right i'm mixing it up um <laughs> but those are the ones that i usually cycle through when i'm looking for stuff to listen to yeah i enjoy i enjoy living in the city that's got kxp it took me forever to stop calling it kcmu after they switched over oh i guess i didn't know that i always knew it as kexp they started as the college radio station and then they moved. It was like uh, they changed the name in like the early, the early, uh, the early aughts. I forget exactly when. I'd been living here maybe like six, five or six years before it switched over. Yeah. And for like a year after, I kept saying like, "Yeah, KCM, the K E X P." And everybody was just like, "Oh, he doesn't know anything." <laughs> <laughs> So now that now that you're able to get out and actually do things again and the world is sort of getting back to normal, like last year, my whole thing is what have you learned from the pandemic? Now it's like, well, now that you're able to get out, what kind of stuff are you planning on doing? Like what what kind of plans do you have artistically or writing or well, I guess writing is artistic. So artistically, what what are your plans for the future? I'm I'm trying to get out and do like some more photography with people again now that like most of us have been vaccinated and we can actually be around each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get a, like another backlog of like stuff I can use for later. Um, other than that, like I usually end up doing most of the stuff myself. Although I have another friend who lives here who does music that so I will probably be getting together with him a little more often because I can, I can play guitar. I don't really know how to play guitar, but I know how to make the guitar and make the sounds that I want it to make. <laughs> <laughs> you've 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 seen it on TV, and you think you can mimic what's going on. <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't really know any chords, but I'm good at like this hand is a little more dexterous. So. Okay, <laughs> but he can play a guitar really well, so he's gonna help me with some tracks on my own projects. Where I'm like, okay, so you take this bit of electronica. Give me a guitar riff you think might go over this. Yeah. Which the first one he's going to do is I accidentally did a cover of Don Henley's Dirty Laundry. How do you accidentally do a cover of that? I was I was throwing together samples because that's how I do my project. I'll take a couple here, like cut one down or take this or mix genres. I'm like, okay, so this beat goes with that beat. And it started playing and the two drum beats together sounded like the beginning of Dirty Laundry and then I threw in the piano riff which didn't have anything to do with the song but it went with it and then I decided to look the lyrics up and I started singing it <laughs> and then it just and I accidentally did a cover right <laughs> and then so I'm like so you think you might want to put the guitar riff over this and I was just like, well, it makes sense. I've got the typewriters. I'm going to record that, and I can put that in. And it's like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot it has, like, a typewriter thing with the kick them when they up, kick them when they down. And it's like, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, just get yourself a mechanical license, and you'll be fine. You know, it's just, you know, just put it online. And actually, I think mechanical license. No, because you can't do video with a mechanical license. You need a synchronization license, I believe. <laughs> But mechanical license, you can release it on like Spotify and all that garbage. Um, and they're not too outlandish. Or you could just put it out there and uh, if they sue you for it, then you can just post that online and then tell everybody that they're, you know, kicking down the creative artist. <laughs> use, use it as a springboard to <laughs> get out. Like local artist gets sued by uh, Joe. Wait, is it Joe Walsh? 
Don Henley. Don Henley. That's what I meant to say. Joe Walsh. <laughs> I'm both in the Eagles, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Th- no, that's cool. I, and I think that's, uh, that is, uh, it is, it is weird to get back together with a band again. Um, almost to the point where it's just like, well, what do we do? You know, it, it, the past couple of weeks, uh, my band has gotten back together and, yeah, sometimes we're just sitting there and it's like, do we run through a song? <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. It, so what are you guys doing? <laughs> right. So we just, we, we've still been fixing up the place, but that's also because we want to continue doing live streaming. Uh, so keep that going. Just because the one thing I did learn over this whole thing is that uh, the reach around the world is still something that can be attained uh, talking to more people and doing, and also the fact that more people have gotten used to talking in an environment like this, it's, it's, it's just gotten a lot better. It used to be like, I don't know how to do that. Sometimes you'd hear from people, but even watching videos and everything online or talking online still want to keep that up. Cause I think it's a really good resource. And I think a lot more people have just gotten used to it. And there's just so many opportunities that way. I think, you know, I noticed that, uh, a lot of the hits I get from uh, Slaves of Sylvia are like mostly like Central and Eastern Europe. <laughs> yeah. Are you putting yeah. your stuff under Creative Commons on there too? Because that helps a lot with uh, with uh, your, uh, European views and listens. No, but I keep forgetting to do the thing where like it asks you if you want to like promote things and put it to the top and thing and, and just like I keep not doing that because again I'm horrible at promoting myself. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, it's not a money issue though, right? No, because it's be. it's well worth it. Yeah, I mean, it sucks to pay for things, but it really is well worth it because I know we would all love to not have to pay to promote. But I mean, it goes back to putting up flyers on, you know, on street or street poles, I was going to say, but that's not right on uh, telephone poles uh, mm-hmm. back in the day. Like, I mean, you got to it got to show stuff that I'm doing uh, to the public still. It, nobody's going to magically discover me. So, uh, even doing the slightest bit of promotion, like, and that goes again to the online stuff, like $5 a day, do it for three days. And you're still, I'm still going to reach more people, uh, by doing that. Even if it's, even if it's like, you never know who's going to see it. So it's, yeah, well now the school is over because my kids have been at home school since the plague. Yeah. And last day was Friday and. Now I've got the whole summer because I don't, yeah, I go back, I can go back to work in September mm-hmm. because I have had to stay home because my wife wouldn't be able to work and take care of them. So the uh, house husband for the last year, <laughs> right? Not terrible at all. <laughs> no, not at all. No, I did. I did it for many years. Well, I mean, I really do hope that, uh, that, getting out there and everything it's i mean i hope the year is going to go good for i hope it goes good for everybody i'm really excited to hear what people are going to be doing uh with their stuff so that's another good part about this particular season of the podcast is hearing instead of asking people what are you going to do now it's like what are you going to do you can get out there you know instead of like how are you going to adjust so, um, and if people wanted to check out your stuff, I mean, where would they, where, what is the website that they would go to, to check out your stuff? Um, it would be skinny tooth productions. And how did you come up with that name? I wanted to come up with something that, uh, was unique, but not terribly difficult to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll say you accomplished that. I like it. Yeah, and I finally did the the domain copyright on it. There was I I had it for a while. No, no, it was the title of my my first book, Screaming at the Mouth, which was all one word. And then I went to re up it, and some British like small company had copyrighted it, huh. and I wasn't able to use it for like a year. Huh. And then I disappeared, and I got it back. <laughs> Really? So it, they they copyrighted it just for a year. I, I have no idea why, or or what. Huh? Like, I wonder if it's some, one of those things where it's like it's connected to, like maybe they had some short film that was only going to be in festivals for like a year, and they used a fake domain name or something. Possibly. <laughs> wow, that's intriguing. I'm I'm curious. Like I've never heard anybody do it for a year. And I've heard. <laughs> 
and I, I, I've looked up, even though my book's been out of print for a while, occasionally I'll Google it, and, like, someone will be selling, like, a used copy. Yeah. I only sold, like, six copies of this book. Yeah. <laughs> How do you have, like, four used copies? <laughs> <laughs> They're just driving all over the U.S. looking for it. That doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Right. Oh, and if people and the three Instagram accounts that you have, what are the three Instagram accounts that people should check out for you? You got Mortimer K. That's M O R T I M U R K, as opposed to the E R. Sometimes people get that wrong. I also wanted to get that as opposed to like a more unique spelling of the name, so it was easier to find. So Mortimer K. Mortimer K. Writes and the Slaves of Sylvia, which is all one word. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today, and I'm, I'm glad that you reached out and that we were able to connect like this. Thank you very much for talking to me. 